Yo guys, my name is Earth Party, and today I am doing a video which I did last year. In fact, in this video, I'm going to be predicting the Premier League team of the season. Last year I'd done this, I pretty much got nearly all of them right, except a few players which should have been in it, but unfortunately they weren't, so yeah. So obviously I watched the Premier League a lot on match a day, and I also watched quite a lot of games as well, depending on who's on and I've put together my team of the season for the Premier League with their stats as well and their ratings. By the way, these stats and ratings are only predictions because we don't actually know what the rating is going to be yet because EA decide that like as soon as it comes out. So most of them are nearly right last year so hopefully that these ratings are nearly final but again I made them up myself. Right, the first player I've gone with is probably the best goalkeeper in the Premier League this season and that is David De Gea. A lot of people might say Courtois should be there but he is in there but he's on the bench just to spoil it and maybe Hugo Lloris but I will talk about Lloris in a bit but in my opinion De Gea has been the best in the Premier League. A lot of people say that he's carried United in a lot of the games which I kind of 50-50 agree with to be honest because I support United and their defence hasn't been that good this season. Because I remember parts of the season they had like Blackett and McNair at the back and they still beat Arsenal so that shows that De Gea is so important to the United team. There's a lot of rumours going around that he could be going to Real Madrid which I hope he doesn't because I definitely want him to stay. In my opinion I think he could be the next Peter Schmeichel or Edwin van der Sar. He's played every game of the season so far with 80 saves in the Premier League and 10 clean sheets. Just to warn you, the real life statistics that I'm giving, for example, the clean sheets, the amount of games, the goals they've scored, is only in the Premier League. The reason why it's only from the Premier League because it's the Premier League team of the season, so I'm only going with stats from the Premier League. So in the Barclays Premier League, he's played 31 games, 80 saves and 10 clean sheets. But obviously he's played loads of Capital One Cup games, FA Cup games, but I'm not going to include them. Actually, no Capital One Cup games because they kind of lost 4-0 to MK Dons in the third round. So yeah. Right, moving on to the defence now, and the first player I've gone with is obviously the right back, and the best right back in the Premier League this season has to be Ivanovic. A lot of people might say Nathaniel Klein should be there as well, but I'll go on to Klein in a bit, but Ivanovic has definitely been the best right back in the Premier League in my opinion. There's a fact that he's actually scored more goals than Falcao, which is quite weird. He's also played every single game of the season and Chelsea have been really good defensively this season and that just shows why Ivanovic is there. He scored four goals in the Premier League this season, obviously not including Champions League, FA Cup, etc. He's had seven yellow cards and one red card this season and had four assists. He also managed to keep in 13 clean sheets, which is obviously incredible. I would give him an 87 rated card with 94 defending and 90 physical. Obviously, he's not really quick in real life and in FIFA, so I've gone with 73 pace. Which is quite good to be honest for a right back, but obviously he could be faster, but obviously his defensive stats makes it up for him. Now we're moving on to one of the best defenders in the Premier League this season, and that is John Terry. He's played every game of the season so far, and has been a brick wall for Chelsea this season. He's managed to score three goals in the Premier League, which I think is more than Falcao, I'm not too sure about that, but... I mean, this guy is one of the best players the Premier League's ever seen. He's so incredible. He's probably England's best ever defender alongside Bobby Moore. Probably is because he is definitely a legend and without a doubt he is definitely the best defender the Premier League has ever seen. Swear down he is. Nobody better in Premier League history. I'll give him a 95 defending with 89 physical. His pace is not really good but a lot of people say that he doesn't need to be quick because his positioning is so amazing. He's literally there at the right time. For my next defender I'm gonna go with Jose Fonte. In my opinion he's the most underrated defender in the Premier League this season. He's also played for Southampton since they were in League One as well. He's played every game this season as well, but he hasn't scored a goal or hasn't had an assist this season. I heard something like this guy's had the most like tackles or clearances in the Premier League this season. I'm not too sure, but a lot of people told me to put this guy in because um, I've been watching him as well. I'll give him an 82 rated card with 88 defending and 87 physical. I think that's about right for him. He was also in Gary Neville's or Jamie Carragher's team this season as well. Um, I'm not sure which one it is, but I saw it like halfway through the season. I know definitely one of them two put him in, 
So that's why I put him in as well because I've seen him play this year and he's been quite good. Southampton have also been really good defensively this year and he's one of the main reasons why. Right, for the left back in the Premier League, I am going to go with Azpilicueta. Again, it's another Chelsea player because Chelsea have been the best defensive team in the Premier League this season. And these three players definitely prove it. He was the best left back last season as well as this season. Obviously, Ryan Bertrand could be there as well, but I'll go on to him later on. He's only played 23 games this season because of Felipe Luiz has been playing for a bit. In my opinion, I think Azpilicueta is better than Felipe Luiz. Do you guys agree with that? Put it in the comment section below, but I think he is better than Luiz, in my opinion. Unfortunately, he hasn't scored this season yet, but he's had three assists, which is quite decent, and an average rating of around 7.2, which is quite good, to be honest. I'll give him an 86 rated card with 86 pace, 89 defending and 84 physical with 80 passing and 81 dribbling. His stats are nearly all above 70 but his shooting just lets him down. The reason why I put his shooting a bit down because he hasn't scored this season so I kept it at 65. Which just seems to be about right to be honest. So now this is where it gets interesting. We're now moving on to the midfielders and I'm going with 4-4-2 and for right mid or right wing in real life. I'm going with Alexis Sanchez. In my opinion, he's been Arsenal's best player this season, but obviously Giroud has been decent recently as well. In my opinion, he's one of the best signings of this season as well because he's been brilliant for his first season in the Premier League. He seemed to settle in very quickly and he's been world class. Obviously, everyone knows that he's a world class player because we've seen it at the World Cup and we've seen it at Barcelona as well. This season, he's played 28 games and 14 goals and four yellow cards. Unfortunately, it doesn't say how many assists he has because it doesn't actually say on this website, but I actually don't know. But he's got 14 goals this season and there's just no words to describe him. I would love to pack this card. This is probably one of the main cards I'm gonna try and pack this year. With 93 pace, 95 dribbling and 90 shooting. Oh my God, I would love to pack this card so badly. So the next player we're looking at is Cesc Fabregas. Obviously, he joined Chelsea this season from Barcelona for around £30 million. And at Barcelona, he wasn't really that good. That's exactly why he got downgraded to 84. But however, he got upgraded to 85. Again, this guy could be in the most consistent team of the season as well because I don't think he's had an inform this year. He's only had an upgrade, but I'm not sure if upgrades count as an inform. I'm not too sure. So this season, he's played 27 games, scored two goals and 16. Dean assist. So by the looks like he got the most assists this season which is quite mental. I can probably see that already by looking at 16. I don't know why he hasn't got an inform this year. That's why he could be the most consistent. If be for 16 he'll get upgraded back to 86 like he was in 14 or maybe 87. We'll have to wait and see. Next player we're looking at is Matic. Again he joined Chelsea not long ago. He used to play for Chelsea then he got sold then Chelsea bought him back. Um, he got two in the season last year as well and this season he's played 28 games, scored one goal and had two assists. He shouldn't be team of the season because of them stats, it's mainly because of his defensive stats this season. And again Chelsea have been so good defensively this season and this guy is their best defensive midfielder so has to be team of the season surely. Also he got upgraded to an 83 as well, he could be in the most consistent team of the season because I'm not too sure if he's had an inform, I don't think he's had, but I definitely know he's had an upgrade to 83 from 82. Right, the next player is probably one of my favourite players this season. I also said that this guy has been the best player in the Premier League this season, and that is David Silva. Again, he could be a cam or he could be a left mid because he's been playing both left mid and cam. I know he's had two informs as a cam, and his normal cast left mid, and his third inform is left mid. So I'm not sure if it will be a cam or left mid. We'll have to wait until um, he gets released. So I gave him a 93 rating with literally nearly all of them 80 precise defending and physical. And again, I would love to pack this guy in cam because I would use him in cam. On the wing, it's kind of wasted because of his lack of pace. But 84 pace is quite an improvement from where he was before. So I upgraded his pace a bit. But that 97 passing, 97... About 97 passing and 96 dribbling makes him an amazing cam and I would love to use that on my team. As I said before, he's been playing left mid and cam this season and he's had 25 games 
11 goals and 3 assists. I thought he would have had more assists, but unfortunately, no, he hasn't. But 11 goals is quite good as well, so yeah, definitely an amazing player. Right, so now, this is where it gets interesting. For my first striker, or my first choice striker, I've gone for Harry Kane. It's quite an obvious one because... This guy has been starting games since November, so he hasn't been playing since the start of the season, and he's literally level with Diego Costa as the top scorer in the Premier League. He played 27 games this season, most of them are not starts as well, so that's pretty decent with 19 goals and 3 assists. I think there's a bit too much hype about him because he's English and England, and England are lacking on like homegrown players, but again, I think he's a quality striker. Um, I don't think he's like world class yet. Remember, he's only 21, so he's gonna get better. And a lot of people say he could do a Gareth Bale. Well, maybe, you never know. Gareth Bale was once shit. I watched a documentary about him. He wasn't the best player in the Southampton youth team, but still managed to break the world record transfer to Real Madrid. The final player I'm gonna go with as the second striker. That is Diego Costa. But obviously, we all know that this guy's a prick, but he's a good striker though. He actually managed to settle into the Premier League quite quickly. Obviously, he was way better than Torres. He's got a kind of similar playstyle to Drogba, and that's probably why Chelsea bought him in, because they're probably looking for a player to fit the Drogba system. That's what Mourinho likes to do, and it worked, because he's had 24 games, 19 goals. Unfortunately, he's had seven yellow cards, but no red cards, surprisingly. Wow. That start actually quite shocked me. But yeah, I don't really like the player in real life only because he's dirty, but I have to admit he's an amazing player, so I can't deny that. Definitely deserves a team in the season spot without a doubt. So that's the starting 11 for the team in the season, Premier League. Normally, whenever this happens, I don't think there's a bench, but EA put a bench in just so there's more players you can pack. And this is my bench. Right, for the goalkeeper, I've gone with Courtois. I'm not going to go through these players like in detail like I did to the starting 11. I'll go through these quite quickly. Courtois, been a world-class goalkeeper. Um, won the best in the Premier League, but De Gea's been better this year. Nathaniel Klein, a brilliant right-back this season. A brilliant right-back this season, but Ivanovic was better. He did get an upgrade from silver to a gold. And I can definitely see this guy being the next future England right back, definitely. Way better than Glenn Johnson. Gushalny, who I did watch when he played against Monaco in the Champions League second leg. I thought he was excellent, but unfortunately Arsenal didn't progress to quarter-final. But Gushalny is a brilliant defender, I wouldn't deny that. Uh, Santi Cazola, who's been brilliant for Arsenal this year. He's also had a few informs as well, so that shows he's a world-class player. Hazard, who scored quite a lot of goals this season, a lot of them are penalties, and he's one of Chelsea's best players, so he's literally their get-out-of-jail player. He's literally one of them, because his goals are important. And then finally, Aguero. He hasn't been scoring much recently, but he's one of the best strikers in the Premier League. As you can see, he scored lots of goals this season, and definitely improved from last year. I don't know why he got a downgrade from 88 to 86. But then he did get upgraded to an 87 and had an inform which was 88 rated. So yeah, an amazing striker. And then finally, Charlie Austin. I think he's all around like 15 goals this season. I'm not too sure actually. It's around 13 to 15. I mean, I should have checked before, but I didn't want to go too much detail. But Charlie Austin has been good for QPR. Unfortunately, QPR are not doing well this year. They've won a few games recently, but they haven't really been doing well. And Charlie Austin has been their best player. And if QPR get relegated, I can see this guy moving to a bigger English club, maybe. These players were recommendations from my friends, and they told me to put Ericsson, who has been a really good player for Tottenham this year. Ryan Bertrand, don't know how this guy did not get an upgrade. He's been such a good left back. I don't know why Chelsea never gave him a chance. It's ridiculous. And then we got Coutinho, who is definitely the Liverpool's best player this year. Same with um, same with Chan as well. Maybe Chan could be there. I just thought of that now because Chan's been good as well as a centre back. Then Morgan Snijderlin, who nearly left Southampton, but he's been Southampton like stand-up midfielder as well. And finally, Hugo Lloris, who's an underrated goalkeeper because he's a top quality keeper, always has been. So right. That is my team of the season prediction video for the BPL. Um, a lot of you might not agree with this because there's always people of different opinions. I don't see who else will get into it out of them players, but maybe Cahill, not too sure. And that's pretty much it. I don't think anyone else will get into it, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that's it.
So that's the end of the video guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that team of the season prediction video. You can put yours in the comment section down below if you want and I'll see if it's any good. And that's it. Please like the video, subscribe and peace out.